Good evening, how are we all on this fine, wintry, cold, horrible evening? God damn it, the weather recently is absolutely so depressing. Good job I've got my SAD lamp on full blast. Um, currently in rehab for this shoulder. Been struggling for 12 weeks now, but I finally managed to find a lady called Wendy who's 60 miles away. Um, a long way to travel to get help, but boy oh boy, when you want to be healthy again and fit and strong, you'll do whatever it takes. And when you're not a paid athlete and you don't have access to chiros and physios and doctors, it can be a long, challenging road getting something sorted. And I had some acupuncture done today. I had a machine fitted up on me that set, sent electro waves into my muscles. And she finally diagnosed me with what we think is the problem. So fingers crossed, here's to getting back on the road to recovery because when you're used to exercising and it's taken out of your life, your mental well-being can soon be destroyed pretty fast. And I've really been struggling on a mental level for the last 12 weeks. As my girlfriend knows, it's been a challenging time for us both, to be honest. But being proactive and I found someone to help me. Enough, uh, enough moaning. Let's crack on with this uh, review of a fantastic Ascot card. Now, before I get started, last week... I'd done all the reading on all of the blogs and I tried to piece them all together, all the bits of the jigsaws to help you, the punter at home, and hopefully we put some winners your way, which I know we did. I absolutely cleaned up at Kempton. That £20 ACA won me £1,800, not to mention the banker being landed in Fountain's windfall. Uh, we're currently six out of six for this year and um, a whole new approach to my punting. I'm only punting these days when I, when I want to. I'm not punting on the daily. And I will only pump when I see a bet that I think I should be backing. So it's a whole new approach. It can feel a little bit um, lonely, you know, not having so many bets sometimes. You know, if you're used to having four or five and you're cutting down to one. But it's what works for me. And I'm all about winning. I'm not here to take part. I'm here to take over. I'm here to win. Be a winning punter. And that's something you should aim to be as well. If you're not a winning punter, look at your loopholes. Look at where you're going wrong. If you're not writing all your bets down, start writing them down. Trust me, you need to have records in this game. Anyway, I've been reading up on Harry Fry in his Betway blog. Uh, he's very confident about American Gigolo in the 10 past three at Leafy Lingfield. A jumps horse rated 130 going over on the all weather over a mile and a half. The favourite in the race appears to be very vulnerable, uh, Guku for Roger Varian. He's been beaten three times as favourite uh, American Gigolo is the second favourite at 11 to 4 at this stage. The Roger Varian Beast is odds on 5 to 4 on. You wouldn't be surprised if that gets the job done. And Harry says if he runs to the level he's been showing over hurdles, he should go close and is arguably my best chance of the weekend. Harry also has a runner at Fontwall called Melrose Boy. And he says about Melrose Boy, this should win. And I just looked at the race. There's no odds yet, but he's going to be about 7-1 to one on. It's not a betting proposition at all. Uh, he ran behind Mr. Whip, so it's a really poor race. And Harry will definitely win that, barring a fall. Dickie Johnson in his Betway blog again. He's quite keen on uh, the big horse in the Peter Marsh. Rock the Casbar in a 3.15 at Haydock. If he handles the heavy ground, Richard thinks he'll definitely go close. And, you know, Dickie Johnson, he's a big judge. One of the best jockeys in the weighing room. Played second fiddle to Tony McCoy for a hell of a long time. But by no means is he a second-class jockey. Powerful, strong, can ride from the front and the back. Genuinely top-class all round. If that's called off, he may reroute to Ascot to ride a horse I'm going to talk about a lot more later on, La Bagel Raw. But I won't go into her too much. But Dickie's quite clean on Apollo Creed in the 4.15 as well for Evan Williams. And he steered us right in Western Astori last week. Uh, Paul Nichols is a trainer that I genuinely tried to avoid in January. He's a 6% strike rate at the moment. I had a little read on his blog and he doesn't seem too keen on anything. So I'll be steering clear of the Paul Nichols runners who have had their flu jabs. You know, the horses take a few weeks to recover is the gist I've got from trainers. So that was the blog roundup. It was brilliant being at Newbury on, uh, the, um, I think it was Wednesday, and I had a great chat, chat, chat with Warren Greatrix. He's a great trainer and somebody who uh, you know, I'm very uh, always keen to talk to. He's very approachable, very friendly, and I had a good chat to him about uh, Alan King training juveniles. And he said, Stephen, he was trained by the master in David Nicholson. He said David Nicholson was the best trainer of a juvenile he'd ever seen before. Um, and Alan has learned all the tricks 
of the game and um, you know his record speaks for himself Radisha last week over at uh, Kempton he's got Nayati in the first race at Ascot the 1240 it's a two mile juvenile hurdle on soft ground and this horse done what he had to do at Newbury first time out not uber impressive kind of workman like but beat Capad the former that hasn't been boosted with Capad going on to finish third and Akaro going on to get beat as well he does have a penalty here Nayati doesn't look the strongest of races second favorite if I can pronounce this right Ostrica Lenoir one of these French four-year-olds for Ben Pauling who again hasn't had a winner in 31 days I mean I couldn't be backing a horse from Ben's at the moment with those kind of stats um, Et More Allure for Gary Moore is an unraced French horse and um, again there's nothing to go on there it does look Nayati's race to lose at this stage currently best price available 10 or 11 on for Alan King who truly is a master with these juveniles not really a race for me to be getting stuck into I'm sure in the morning the market vibes are really going to dictate which way the, the money's going the yards will have all had a little bit of chitter chatter as they do and we'll be able to discover a bit more but Nayati probably the one to beat the second race at Ascot is the 115, a two mile three amateur riders handicap chase for horses rated 0 to 135. I like the look of Philip Hobbs here, who's operating at a far better strike rate recently. Had a tough start to the year, but his strike rates gradually started to improve, up to 25% now. Good to see Philip Hobbs back in good form. And he has a French recruit here called Chef de Quip who beat master plan of Charlie Lonsdon's last time over at Sandown over two and a half miles on heavy. We know he likes a trip. We know he goes in the ground. Master plan came into that race in particularly good form. Charlie's done a good job with that horse. He'd won his race prior to that. He was second prior to that behind the tailgater. I think that form could be pretty decent. David Maxwell is a good amateur rider, something you need to be in these races. You know, he knows how to ride from the front, ride from the back. A six pound penalty. I don't think the handicap has been too hard on him again this isn't a race i'd be looking to punt in too much the two venetia williams horses in there i wouldn't be with them but i do think chef de quip could be the one to beat in the 115 it's a tricky looking affair the 150, it's a horse I'm looking forward to seeing. I talked to Warren Greatrix about this super mare at Newbury and I had a good chat with him and he really gave me a good insight into the fact she really needs a good trip. And he thinks three miles at Ascot is going to suit her better than ever before. She's won seven out of nine races. Overall record, sorry, is nine out of 12, winning nine out of her last seven. Warren's in great form. He had another winner today or possibly two. Did he have two? No, he had just the one today and two the day before, operating four wins from his last 24 runs, a 17% strike rate. You know, he's going in really good form. On official rating, Le Bagoreau has £10 in hand ahead of Dusky Legend, who I'm not convinced wants three miles, not at all. I remember when Le Bagoreau beat Dusky Legend over at Newbury, I think it was, um, she received a few pounds that day and today she's giving a few but again I think she's a far better horse and I think she's going to improve a lot more stepping up to three miles well she already won over three at Kempton but I think this is the making of her beating Jer's girl that day I was quite impressed because she gave her four pounds as well I don't see anything in this race capable of beating Le Bagoreau and I have to be honest I'm bloody annoyed with myself because Labrooks went 11 to 10 2.1 and I didn't snap it up when I saw it it's now 10 to 11 on 1.91 and I'm pretty bloody annoyed because I wanted to have a max on this I'm hoping in the morning She's going to potentially, maybe the bookies will push her back out a little bit so we can get a bit of value. But for me, Le Bagel Rot is a steering job under Noel Feely. If uh, Haydock's called off, Richard Johnson will come over to ride her. I'm not afraid of Dusky Legend. Midnight Tune, Anthony Honeyball, a yard in great form. She's done really well to win her last two, but she's gone up, you know, £11 in the handicap for that. Beat Ron's Dream, receiving a fair bit of weight. Ron's Dream got beat again today. I don't think that's good form. Graceful Legend, you know, she's 50 lengths behind Le Bagarol. That wasn't her true running, but she's not in the same gravy as this horse. This mare should be winning and winning well. She's a big, powerful, strong mare. I think Le Bagarol is the banker on the card. Hopefully, we can, might be able to get evens 11 to 10 tomorrow. But she is one to have in all your doubles and trebles. The fourth race on the card, and it's a cracking little contest this, a two mile three handicap hurdle, 14 runners on good to soft, soft ground. And it's gonna be an intriguing contest. We've got Jenkins back again, the wallet emptier. He didn't um, empty the wallet last time at Kempton, he went and bloody won. 
strange that race because Nikki had the favourite in that who ran no race, drifted on the exchanges all day. They backed Jenkins. A change of tactics instead of being held up, he led all the way and ran his field a merry dance. The handicapper battered him for it. An £11 rise. James takes off a handy five. But I couldn't trust Jenkins to repeat that form two runs in a row. I'm a no for him. Lebru for Ben Pauling. If the yard were in form, I'd be having a maximum bet on this horse. I think he's very well handicapped off a 139. Beat Benatar for Gary Moore, who we all know went on to beat Finney and Oscar. I just can't trust the form of Ben Pauling's yard at the moment, unfortunately. The horse I like in this is Arthur Moore's crossed my mind who was third at Sandown behind a hair breath who's trained by Ben Pauling I think the step up from two miles to two mile three is going to help him he's got young John Joe O'Neill yep his dad is John Joe O'Neill taking off a more than handy seven pounds meaning his mark will go down from one two four racing off a one one seven that's a very feasible mark indeed he's a very um, a very decent jockey he's probably been riding since he was three or four growing up around horses and they're the kind of amateurs that you want to be riding conditionals uh, he is at the moment around six to one. Cross my mind. Actually, that's all. There's a little bit of sixes left. Jenkins, nine to two. Cross my mind, six to one. Oxwich Bay, six to one. And Le Brew, well, you can get eights on that. I think the market will tell the vibes a lot more in the morning. But at this stage, I do like Arthur Moore's crossed my mind. I couldn't trust Jenkins. Could you trust Jenkins to run two good races in a row? If you could, you're a better man than me. The fifth race on the card is a two mile five handicap chase. 50 grand, 50 large to the winner. It's a really good contest this and you all know who I like already. It is Guitar Pete for Nicky Richards with young Ryan Day claiming three. Up to 139 after winning a really good race at Cheltenham last time. Obviously, he wouldn't have won. Starkitec broke down, but he still won the race. Take Starkitec out the race. He won really nicely. Prior to that, he won a good race beating Samitagel over at Weatherby. Yes, he's gone up £12 in his last three races, but with Ryan taking off three, he races off a lovely weight at 10 stone five. And I tipped this up during the week at seven to one. I think the top price at the moment for Guitar Pete there's a little bit of fives left each way, three places each way, a quarter of the odds with some firms. I'm just quite keen on him and the fact that it's going to be a strongly run race and he should have the race run to suit. Acting last, I spoke to Harry Fry about this. It wasn't on the agenda, but the horse has recovered well from his last race and here he is again. You know, he's only got up two pounds beating Bally Arthur. Had a fairly tricky, tough race last time out. You know, only had nine days to recover. Venetia's horse, Tenor Nivene, keeping the weights down, right, racing off a 157. Couldn't have that at all. He is a mudlark, but, you know, 11 years old now, first time out. Although Venetia, as we all know, she excels with her horses in the mud. Isn't it funny how some horses, some trainers do so well with horses in the mud. Some do well when the ground's better. Flat tracks, stiff tracks. It just goes to prove that trainers do train their horses so differently. But for me here, I'm hoping Guitar Pete can carry on his good form and at least get us in the money with our each way bets. You all know that I've backed Forrester Aglers a few times this year for Lucinda Run Russell, who landed our nap again today, getting Lucinda. But he's gone up a total of £21 in his last three races. I'm not quite sure he's good enough for this grade. Potentially he could be, but the selection is Guitar Pete each way. 3.30, the big race at Ascot, the Clarence House. Uh, first off, it's the worst Group 1, the Grade 1 that I've potentially ever seen. Uh, take out Brain Power and you've got some handicappers taking on a genuine Group 1 horse. Brain Power is a novice who's done absolutely nothing over fences, yet he's 5-2. to two. To beat a horse who's gone to Cheltenham, check out this record. Won the Arkle, beating God's Own. Went on to finish second to one of the greatest horses in history, Sprinter Sacra. Came back the next year to win the Ryanair at the Cheltenham Festival. I mean, Sprinter Sacra is a genuine superstar on soft ground, ranging from trips from two miles all the way up to three miles. Some of his French form over hurdles is truly phenomenal. I couldn't believe the 8-11 to on during the week, 1.71. I thought that was an absolute gift. It was like picking money up off of the floor, like Harry Finley says. Underso will lead all the way. The question here is simple. 
How far will Underso win by? In my, problem, in my opinion, he's probably going to win by seven or eight lengths. I will be looking at distance bets in the morning. I have stuck him in all of my accumulators. Will brain power even be second? Well, he's got conditions in his favour. He does like Ascot. You would like to think so. Although he's very lightly raced coming into this kind of race and Spiridek and Karl Morloff are both improving. You never know, Karl Morloff could actually be second in this. He was second in a grade two there behind Royal Regatta last year. And I don't think the drop in trip is going to um, hinder him too badly. Harry Fry said he's a horse who travels extremely well. But this is under Sko's race to lose. He's a top class horse. It's just a question of how far does he win by. What the hell is this gamble on brain power? Why was under so 8 to 11 on during the week? Now he's 2 to 1 on. We've missed the value, but it does look an absolute bloody steering job. An interesting little race, this final race at Ascot, the five past four. It is a two mile five novice hurdle and I love to back form lines as you all know and Santini beat my boy one of the six, the Super Six, Bloggers Super Six for the year, Chef de Zobo. Beat him easily by four lengths. I'm sure Chef de Zobo needed the run that that day, excuse me, but Santini done the job well. He's got a penalty in this two mile five novice hurdle. But you know, you look at the form with the way Chef de Zobo won Santini himself should be improving. That was only his first run over hurdles. Nicky also has champ in the race. Now, this was a bit of a hype horse for JP McManus. Aiden Coleman, top jockey, rides him. But I remember seeing champ at Nicky's, and he's a very small horse. I wouldn't be that bullish about him. Kim Bailey has the second favourite in Vindication, who's available at 4-1. to one. Won a decent race at Leicester last time out. Seemed to spring a bit of a shock. Again, the form of that leaves a bit to be desired. I think this is Nicky's race to win Santini and I think he's one of the bets of the card. I've backed him in all my doubles and trebles and I'm hoping that form line stays true. It's a bloody good card at Ascot. Hopefully a lot of you are coming along supporting the National Hunt game. I just can't wait to see Le Bagel Raw win and I'm going to double that with Undersco. 10 to 11 at the moment and 2 to 1 on. You've got a 2-2. Two, two. You've got a 2 to 1 double at the moment. Hopefully some of those filthy firms might do some sort of enhanced boost tomorrow. Looking forward to seeing Willie Mullins in the winner's enclosure at Ascot. A little bet potentially over at Taunton is Vocalizer for Robin Dickin. Ran behind not another model of Gary Moore's. Pushed him quite hard that day. Ran a really nice race off a of 105. Only gone up two pounds by the handicapper, up to 107. Conditions should not trouble this horse at, uh, at all. Races off a lovely weight, off a 107, uh, 10 stone 12. I think he should go well for a yard in really good form. Currently available at five to four. That's Vocalizer in the 140 at Taunton. The 2.15 at Taunton's a two mile three handicap hurdle on Soft. Irving's top weight, he's on the decline. A 14 to one shot here who could, you never know, spring a bit of a shock. Harry Whittington, Whittington is in great form. We all saw the absolute beast win at Newbury, the banker the other day, St. Cavaldos. You must watch out for this horse. He is huge. He is a tank. St. Cavaldos. He's got Cold March in here who came from Venetia Williams. He's a 150 chaser running off a 130 over hurdles. Now I know it could be a prep run. I know he may not have the speed but I think 14 to 1 is a bit of an insult to Cold March's chances in this 215. Worth a small little bet at 14 to 1. Moving over to Haydock where we don't know if racing will go ahead at this stage. Heavy ground, two miles for novice hurdlers and as we all know when it gets heavy at Haddock it gets bloody heavy. I'm going to take a little bit of a punt on a 25 to 1 shot. McGowan's pass, who one thing can be assured, this horse loves the ground, stays a lot further than two miles. I think we'll see this as three miler in future. He beat a horse called Carlos de Frutier, who, as you all know, is owned by some of my friends. Unfortunately, suffered a bit of a problem. We'll be back hopefully in the not too near future. But beat Cool Mix over at air. I just think he jumps for fun. He stays all where all day in a race where we don't know much about any of them. And, you know, the front three in the market, First Flow, Waterlord and Lost in Translation could all be really decent. I'd be willing to take a little bit of a punt on McGowan's pass there at 25 to 1. And I'm talking a very bloody small punt because it's a nightmare of a race. The 315, the big race of the day, the staying handicap chase to Peter Marsh, three mile two on heavy ground. It's going to be a real war of attrition. It's going to be a case of who has the bollocks, who wants to win, who wants to be the boss. And in a few of the horses here, we know they stay all day. And Sue Smith starting at the front of the market in Hainan, you know, was an impressive winner at Haydock last time, hammering. K 
Count Town Oscar, who stays all day himself. He absolutely rocketed home there over three mile four. This three mile one trip will hold no fears for Hainan, who was raised by the handicapper by eight lengths, but he's had a good old 56 day break there. And I think Sue has put him away, probably freshened him up. She's a great trainer, great record at Haydock. You'd like to think Hainan's gonna be run an absolute huge race. And some of the firms are playing four places each way. Hainan's surely gotta be in the shake up there. Um, the other horse I like at 14 to 1 is trained by Kim Bailey, Knock and Now Rawley. Has some good form in the book, including a second place at air behind Cap Ran de Sioux. That was over three miles on heavies. Another horse who will love the ground, stays all day, gets in there off 133, has a lovely racing weight off a 10 stone four. My two against the field there, Knock Renor Lawley however the hell you say it, and Hainan. That is the Peter Marsh. It's going to be a case of who bloody wants it, mate? Now, if you love your Irish racing like I do, like most of us do, the 320 at Thurlers is a lovely mare's grade two novice chase. And I've been looking at this for a few days now. Jack Kennedy, Kennedy, Jack Kennedy, I need to go for some elocution lessons, is booked up for Denara de Zobo, a lovely five-year-old mare. Uh, over phase last time in a three mile, the grade one over at Leopardstown. Uh, dropping back to two and a half miles, she gets a lovely seven pound weight allowance for being a five year old mare. Not too sure what price she's going to be. If I were to price Denara de Zobo up, I think she could be in the region of a two to one shot. Kate Appleby's shoes will probably be favourite for Willie Mullins, but I'm quite a big fan of Denara de Zobo in Ireland in the 320 on Sunday. Good luck with all your bets this weekend. It's a cracking day's racing. I have had a little accumulator. I'll post all my bets underneath this that I'm doing early, and I will obviously be putting my nap up tomorrow, going for seven winners out of seven bets this new year on a tremendous run. A little uh, bet that I've had for tomorrow is Le Bagel Rot in the 150, Underso in the 335, Vocalizer in the 140, and Santini in the 405. It's a 10 to one acker. I think I chucked 25 pound on that to win 250 notes. Um, I think that's pretty much it. And besides that, I'm just gonna quickly show you the spreadsheet records. So this is pretty much how the uh, p and is looking at the moment, plus 19.64 points. Six bets, Yamworth at nine to four, went off 15 to eight. The Glasgow Warrior advised at six to five, went off at 11 to eight on. Chef de Zobo, six to four, went off 11 to eight. So I'm always kind of beating the markets. And as a punter, if you can beat the market, you'll be happy. I advised brewing up a storm on the exchange 2.04. That drifted, lost out there, went off six to four. St. Cavaldos advised at 11 to eight, went off five to four. And Jump for Doe, baby, advised at six to four, went off six to five. Basically got the horse's name, date, meeting and stake, advised price SP, how much I won, what happens in the P&L. I'm up £984 on those six bets, nearly a grand, which is some going. That's the point scale, one to four. And here we're up 19 points. And I kind of just keep the race type to see if there's a pattern emerging. But I advise you all to keep your own set of records. I learned from a lot of my mistakes last year when it came to punting and I'm not going to make the same mistakes. Only a fool continues to make the same mistakes. What you want to start doing is recording all of your bets, setting a staking program, try not to break it. If you do, if you go off tangent for a day or two, don't worry about it. Don't beat yourself up about it. Jump back on the bandwagon. If you're looking to punt for a living, if you're looking to punt for a hobby, if you're looking to punt just to win a few quid on the side, you've got to be serious about it. And with all the special offers, the bookies offer you and the great value on BetDAC at this given stage, you've got to be concise with your actions. You don't have to punt every day. Look for horses you fancy. Save your ammunition, boys and girls, because if you empty the cup on silly bets, when it comes to having a serious bet, your stakes will be lowered. So save your bullets, save your pat firepower, and only bet when you want to. I've had six bets on these singles this year. We're 19 days into the year. This is the new blogger. No more mucking around. You know, I love to find horses at the front end of the market who are going to shorten and have an outstanding chance of winning. And that's what I'm good at. It doesn't matter if you're someone who likes 10 to 1 shots, 5 to 1 shots, or 2 to 1 shots. My last six uh, bets advised were 9 to 4, 6 to 5, Five, six to four, even six to four and 11 to eight. Not one of them have been odds on. So you can all shut up, mate. Where's all the trolls now? Anyway, I'm gonna go and get an early night's sleep and I will see you all at Ascot tomorrow. Cheers. And yes, I'm still doing dry January and feeling 
bloody fantastic. Well, I'll feel better once this shoulder's sorted out.